my growth Was a season of pain too Sunshine with the rain too Father quit me with the rain boots It's nighttime, so it's hard to see That's why my face so important to me I'm holding on to your word, never leave from me I need your peace immediately I need you, I know every step I take You take two in the season that my heart breaks Make it new, make it you I let you lead, I yield Cause I know you cook the recipe Your eyes see the best in me I need that, and that's why the ground is where my knees at I'm hurt, Dad, I know you see that I'm casting my cast, it's grief, you take that I praise you because I can go Lord, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this is a day that you've made. And God, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, God. We thank you now, Lord God, for your presence. God, we thank you, Lord God, for your love, God. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy that's new every day, God. We thank you, Lord, for being our Father, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being the provider. God, we sin right now just in admiration, God. God, we admire you for your presence. God, we admire you, Father God, for your love towards us, Lord God. We enter now into your gates with praise, into your courts with thanksgiving, God. We come, Lord God, with thanksgiving on our hearts and thanksgiving of our minds. God, we come to give you thanks. Thanks, Lord God, for letting us see this day, God. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us and our loved ones, God. Thank you, Lord God, for making a way out of no way, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for being our provider, God. Thank you, God, for being my friend and my, and my sense of loneliness, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being the answer, Lord God, when things were unknown to me, and God, and I was anxious in things. God, thank Thank you, Lord God, for being my help, my present help, Lord God. Thank you, God, for being a healer to us, God, when we are sick. God, thank you, Lord God, for being our friend, God, when we're friendless, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being every single thing that we need, God. We just say thank you, God. There is no God that sits higher than you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for being the Alpha and the Omega, God. We thank you, Lord God, for being the Great I Am. We thank you, Lord God, for being El Shaddai, Lord God. We say thank you, God. We come together, God, just like Father God on the day of Pentecost, on one accord and one mind, God, wherever we're located, even though we're in different locations, God, just to come into your presence, God. We thank you, God, that your presence has no walls and no boundaries, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can feel your anointing. We can feel your glory. We can feel your power, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, let that power, God, stir up the gift that is within us, Lord God. We come, Lord God, to seek your faith, Lord God. Your word says that in Matthew, Lord, Father God, that God, if we will seek after you and your righteousness, God, that you will add all things unto us, God. Add things unto your people, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, that what the enemy think that he's stolen from us, what the canker worms think that he's there taken from us, God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are a restorer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a refresher, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, God, I thank you, God, that you're restoring the minds of your people, restoring the hearts of your people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, as a people, Lord God, that you will unite us together, Lord God, that you will heal our land, God. Heal our land, Father God, from the hurt, God. Heal our homes, Lord God, and our communities from pain, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, comfort those, Father God, that feel overwhelmed, Lord God, that since, Father God, just sense of heaviness over them. God, we take off the spirit of heaviness and we put on a garment of praise, Lord God. We open up our mouths, God, where we are and say thank you, God. We open up our mouths to say hallelujah to your name, God, for hallelujah is the highest praise, God. So we say hallelujah, Lord God, no matter what the situation looks like in front of us, no matter what it looks like around us, no matter what our bank accounts look like, God, we still say hallelujah, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, nothing will steal our joy, nothing will steal our peace, Peace, God. Nothing will steal, Father God, our joy away and our happiness, Lord God, in you, God. So we said steadfast, God, and we stand anchored in you, Lord God, to trust you, God, that you may order our footsteps, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I thank you now, 
now, Lord God, that you will begin, Father God, to heal those that, Father God, are dealing with infirmity, Lord God. Heal those, Father God, that has lost loved ones, Lord God. Heal the hearts of your people, Lord God. They even feel angry, Father God, and confused, Lord God, about what's going on in our world, Lord God. We give it to you, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, God, that God, that we trust not just in you, but God, your word says that faith without works is dead. So God, we trust you and we have faith in you, but God, we are ready and we stand, Lord God, on the battlefield to fight, Lord God, against every attack of the enemy, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So Lord God, prepare us, God. Prepare our minds. Prepare our spirits. Give us strategy, God, to win the war, Lord God, that comes against us on every side. God, we thank you, Lord God, now, Lord God, that there would be a presence, God, Father God, in our homes, and no matter where we are, that we will feel your presence throughout this service, Lord God. That God, that our hearts and our minds is receptive to hear the word from you, a right now word, Lord God, that will propel us, Lord God, into the destiny and the purpose that you have for us. I thank you now, Lord God, that there will be nothing, Lord God, that we will miss, there will be not, Lord God, there will, never, there will not be a miscarriage, Lord God, of purpose, God, of gifts, Lord God, that you have within us, Lord God. But we will do everything that you've called us to do. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we declare it to be so. In Jesus' name. What's up, all nations, Baton Rouge and New Orleans? Come on, let's go before the presence of God today. This is a favor for us, so I know you're already excited. Let's do it. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my doom Till I met you Oh, I, I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my doom Till I met
But chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter, I was an orphan But you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name sing a little bit longer if you know that you are free i want you to get up and start leaping wherever you are and i want you to make this declaration unto god uh, with a boldness uh, with a triumphant victory uh, come on let's the glass say said i am free praise the lord i'm free no longer bound no more change holding me my soul is resting it's such a blessing praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free I'm living in the light now I'm living in the light now living in the light now I'm living in the light now I'm living in the light now I'm living in the light Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, all chains are broken through you, Jesus. And I know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's why, that's why I'm living in the light now. I'm living in the light. Yo, 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 this your brother Yul, and I want to welcome you to Anwa Moves. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, as you can see right now, I'm in my car. The truth is, I'm tired. But let's move, all right? Listen. Welcome to the All Nations Baton Rouge Virtual Campus, where we still exist for three things. If you know them, help your brother out. Find family, discover purpose, and we changing the world. Yeah, here's me. Now listen, thank you. Thank you to the people who are new. 
Thank you to the people who are consistent that we check in every Sunday. We truly, truly appreciate you. I am about to move. I'm about to go. I'm finna ride somewhere. I need you to check my people out. They coming with that move. So let's move together. Peace. Good morning, all nations. It's Elizabeth here, and I am here to remind you about Tribes. Look, there are still some amazing things happening behind the scenes at All Nations, and Tribes is one of them. So listen, if you have not heard already, Tribes is when a group of people come together as family, and they talk about similar topics of conversation. So listen, if you have not done so already, go to www.allnationsbr.com slash tribes and sign up for your tribe today. So look, I'm not gonna hold y'all too much longer. I'm gonna pass this off to the next person. Love you, peace. Hey family, this next move is dedicated to our single ladies. Yes, girl. On Friday, June 12th at 7 o'clock p.m., Fierce Women is hosting its first single ladies panel on Facebook Live. So if you don't already do this, go ahead and follow us on Facebook at MY Fierce Women. And you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram as well at fiercewomen.my. And all you married ladies, all you engaged ladies, all you girls with the boyfriends, well, y'all single too, but y'all can come and hang out with us as well. See y'all Friday. Bye. Hey, what's going on, people? Hey, look, this your man, Ivan, and I am here with your next move. Look, y'all already know, man, it's lit up in this thing. It's all about the youth. You heard me, the NY youth, the NY kids. It goes down every Saturday. The virtual hangout. Y'all already know what's up, man. Look, NY kids, all y'all got to do is go to www.allnationsbr.com slash kids for the youth. Same thing, allnationsbr.com com slash youth well not the same thing but anyways look y'all already get it man and what they are.com slash kids i'm messing it up anyways bro y'all just visit the website come hang out with us saturday you kids and why you let's turn up yeah yo 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 i am back and look where i'm at <laughs> look where i'm at i had to take a move but we still want you to discover your purpose because you can't be here like i'm here but you can still be tapped into what you discovered and purpose to do. How you do that? Through our discovery classes. We want you to go through our discovery classes and you do that by texting Hey Fam to 94000. I'm gonna say that one more again. 94000 to Hey Fam. Listen, I'm finna be out I'm finna be gone, but before I do that, I need you to do something for All Nations Baton Rouge. That's to like us on them social networks. Mm -hmm. I need you to do that. So what I need you to do first, if you're on Facebook, go to All Nations Baton Rouge and like the page. Also, why don't you like All Nations New Orleans as well while you there? And if you're on the gram, like I'm on the gram, you need to like up All Nations BR. And you already know, for any additional information pertaining to All Nations Baton Rouge, you go to our website. That's www.allnationsbr.com. All Nations. Peace. Legacy. Legacy to me is what you leave behind. Whenever your ancestor has a big impact on you, when somebody dies, they make such a strong impact on your life that when they die, you never forget who they are. Like our church motto, change the world. We gotta make sure we leave blessings for the people that's coming after us. It's something that is gonna leave a name, and in the future, it's like you don't know what it is. Legacy is the gift that you give the world to make the world a better place. What do people rem remember you? Is. How are we going to help out the future generation? Without being in the future, we got to do it in the present. Hey fam, we've gotten to the part of the service where we continue in our worship unto God by way of giving. Look, we know that giving is not a break in the service, but it's actually worship unto the Lord. And every time we open our hearts unto God in this way, to show God that we love Him, by way of giving and that we can steward what he's already given to us. It moves the heart of God. 
I like to say this, we never give to get. That is not our objective. We don't give grudgingly or out of necessity, but we give with a cheerful heart, understanding that it's worship unto God. And as we go into this, this moment now, I want you to open your heart to God. Sometimes we get to the giving part of the service, we treat it like a break or we rush through it. I don't want you to do that. I want you to open your heart to God now and allow Him to be a part of how you respond in this moment. As you're opening your heart and you're preparing your gift to the Lord, make sure you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in this moment. Look, I know we're not in the building, so you're not raising your hand for an envelope, but we do want you to know that you can visit our website, allnationsbr.com or allnationsno.com. Click on the Give tab and you can give that way. Or you can text an amount to 84321. That's text an amount to 84321. We appreciate your heart towards the Lord. We appreciate your gifts on today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the seed that you've entrusted in our care. It is our hope and prayer, God, that we're always a good steward of what you have allowed us to have and to manage it properly. Father, we thank you for these seeds, and we thank you that your Holy Spirit is responding even now, that, it is, that this is good ground and that it will produce a great harvest. We thank you for the miracle signs and wonders that will show up as a result of our obedience to you. And God, I thank you that you continue to grow our hearts of love towards you so that, Lord, we continue to trust you with all that concerns us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's go back into the service.
you just encouraged each and every week by the power of God that rushes into our homes or our cars or wherever you are. I tell you what, even though it is not the same as being in this physical location, I feel the presence of God each and every week 
uh, right in the comfort of my home. And I am so encouraged to still remain connected to all of you, even in this time period where we're doing it from all of our different locations. I joke and say, man, we have locations all over the city and beyond, all over the state, the United States. People are watching and tuning in from everywhere. And so I'm just encouraged by what God continues to do in our services each and every week. You know, I always open up with the understanding that what God is about to give to you, what you're, go you're about to receive on today is something that somebody else needs as well. So do us a favor, go ahead and share this. If you're on Facebook, hit that share button now. Like, actually do it. Like, hit the share button right now. Um, if you're on YouTube, copy that link, send it to somebody. Make sure that you're getting this to, to other people, your friends, your family members who are connected to you. They need an opportunity to be blessed by this word as well. Parents, you know, each and every week we send a lesson to you so that you can go through it with your children because we want to continue to keep their faith up throughout this entire process. And as always, you already know, I don't like doing introverted church. And look, introverts, I mean, this is not that hard to do. Like you're at home, all you have to do is stay active in the comments. So do us a favor as you are watching and tuning in, stay active in the comments. It's so good to engage with each and every one of you every single week. It's such a blessing. Sometimes it helps because, because as we're watching, we're getting insight together on the spot uh, that we can share with one another. And so we want to continue to keep you engaged throughout the process. Now, last week, we continued our legacy series with a message entitled, Use What You Got to Build What You Want. And I know that thing stirred many of you up because sometimes we're sitting around waiting on something to come into our hands, fall into our hands, and you know we don't consider what God has already given us and how the act of stewardship teaches God that he can trust us with more by teaching us how to handle properly what he's already entrusted us with. So every time God gives us something and we respond the right way, when we steward it properly so that it experiences growth, then God looks at you and I and he says, I can trust them, I can count on them, I can rely on them to do their very best with what I have placed into their care. And I don't know about you, but when God looks at Ronaldo, I want him to say, Ronaldo does an excellent job with everything that I place in his care. I, you know, we use the parable of the talents and I wanna be like the one with the five. The one with the five, he took that and he created five more to, to the point that he ended up with 10. You know, even the one with two wasn't bad. You know, I wanna be with the one with the five because that says I've already done the pre-work and God trusts me with more, but at least the one with the two, he went out and got two more. I'm good with being that too. I don't wanna be like the one where God has entrusted something into my care and I've done nothing with it. And I hope that you have gotten yourself stirred up based upon whatever God has placed in your care to do all that you can to steward it well. Now I'm gonna talk in a little while about how because of this awakening of stewardship uh, on this past week, God did something with me with a previous idea that I feel like I had squandered at one point, that I felt like I didn't steward properly, and because my heart got in the right place. And I said, look, you know, God, he, he can give us another opportunity. He can give us another chance. He gave me another chance and it's bigger. And we're gonna talk about it in a little bit. Uh, but I, I wanna start by encouraging some of you this morning before I get into my actual subject matter because a lot of you have allowed your ideas to be reduced down. I'm about to go somewhere today. You've allowed your ideas to be reduced down over, over time by a lack of confidence in yourself, a lack of confidence in God, or by investing more in the belief of failure, which is ultimately fear, than the belief of success, which is ultimately faith. I wanna say that again. A lot of you have allowed your ideas to be reduced down over time by a lack of confidence in yourself, a lack of confidence in God, or by investing more in the belief of failure, which is ultimately fear, than the belief of success, which is ultimately faith. And I want to start by encouraging you with this scripture before I give you the subject matter, all right? I'm going to just make you wait a little bit longer for it. 
And, but I want to encourage you with this scripture first in Hebrews, the 10th chapter in verse 35 and 36. I'm reading from the NIV version. It says this. So do not throw away your confidence. It says it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. I'm going to say it again. So do not throw away your confidence. You have to understand that the enemy is constantly working to try to diminish your confidence. The enemy will utilize people and your inability to overcome their thought processes about you. Notice I didn't just say people because it can't, it can't work with people unless you give in to it. So God, the, the enemy, not God, the enemy will use people and then your inability to overcome their thought process about you to reduce your confidence. Or the enemy will use previous failures in your past to reduce your confidence. He'll do all of these things because his objective is to get you to believe beneath the level that God is trying to raise you to. The scripture says again, so do not throw away your confidence. It says it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. I want to do this before I dive deeper today. I want to speak to some of you because I want to start by first addressing the lies that the enemy has told you about yourself and about your abilities. I want to start there. The seed of rejection that has been deposited on the inside of your heart because maybe somebody else couldn't see what you saw in yourself. Or maybe the door of opportunity closed on you in one direction that you expected it to open in, right? The enemy has gotten you to lose a, a sense of self and confidence and, and understanding of your abilities. I want to speak to you. I want to uproot the deception the enemy has placed in your path to make you feel less than ill-equipped or incapable of doing great things, right? Because if you're going to digest what I'm going to deposit on the inside of you today by way of what the Holy Spirit has supernaturally inspired in me, we have to first uproot the faulty mindset that will stand in the way of you receiving this. See, as I preach today, I don't want this to fall on thorny ground. I don't want it to fall on stony ground. I want this to be deposited in the inside of your heart. I want you to receive it in your mind as truth, as actual factual ability for you to be able to in, uh, implement this in your life in a way that it begins to produce for you. I get excited. I'm telling you, I'm almost about to jump out of this seat. I want to get you to believe more in the possibility of what lies ahead than the brokenness of what you left behind. Because some of you are still parked in the past and the past doesn't look the way you want it to look. And the past didn't work out the way you wanted it to work out. And the past didn't before perform for you the way you wanted it to perform. But I want to speak to you right now in this moment, and I want you to begin to look into the future, into what God is calling you into now, instead of what happened behind you. I want to start, and I'm about to give you the topic. And you know, I know you already know it because we put it out every week, but still, I want to just wait to say it. But I want to start by taking you to a familiar passage of scripture I love in Luke, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation beginning at verse 1 and going to verse 7. It says, One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Today, I want to speak from the subject matter, build it bigger. I want to speak from the subject matter, build it bigger. Now, 
As I was going through this process this week, I tell you, God does this thing with me week to week. It's like he doesn't speak to me way in advance. So, you know, I record a lot on Thursdays. So God, he'll speak to me maybe on Wednesday night or he'll wait to speak to me uh, on Thursday morning. And, you know, before he really unwraps and unravels all of the, the subject matter that he wants me to speak on in that week. But this week, God took me through this process, and some of you might remember last week I talked about the fact that I had an idea, an idea that I sat on um, based upon a number of different factors, but recently I saw it implemented and very successful. And, you know, I, I couldn't do nothing but kick myself in the butt because it was my fault for waiting instead of implementing what God gave me. Remember what I said last week, when God has something he wants to get in the earth, he will give you a period of time to implement that thing. But if you don't move on what God placed on the inside of your heart, what you will see is that someone else, God will move on to someone else, just like he took from the one with the one and gave it to the one with the five. God will give it to somebody else who's ready to steward what he gave you the chance to build. And so, you know, I'll be honest, at first I was, I was, man, I was sulking a bit because I'm like, bro, you missed a, a phenomenal opportunity. What were you thinking? You should have built it out. You should have gotten on top of it. And right at the point that I got settled and God still gave me a sense of understanding that I could move forward in what he had given me regardless. And there was some tweaking of it. Y'all, I tell you, yesterday, the Lord began to take that original idea that he had given me a year ago. And God took that idea levels and levels and levels up to now what God has given me to do is so much bigger than what I was going to do a year ago. Because my heart got in the right position and I said, God, I'm ready to steward whatever it is that you entrust me with. God said, now I can give you that bigger idea, Ronaldo. Now that you're ready to receive this, now that your mind is, has opened up, now that you are ready to go through this process of building what I placed on the inside of you, I'm ready for you to build it bigger. You you saw it as one thing, but I see it as an even greater thing. I know that this is confirming something for, for, uh, for some of you on today because God has given you an, a, a big idea and what you have done over time is you've reduced that idea down to your comfort or you've reduced that idea down to your convenience or you've reduced that idea down to your level of belief in yourself or your level of confidence in yourself and now you're only at a shell of the idea when God is ready to skyrocket you to another level. It is time for you to raise in your level of expectation, rise in your level of understanding of who God has called you to be, how he is backing you. Heaven is on your side in this season. And I hear the Lord say prophetically to build it bigger. It is time. And I'm going to tell you this, what God has placed on the inside of me, I'm about to run radically towards that vision because I understand that he has given it to me now. He is expecting me to do something with it. And I've already seen that when I don't get my mind right and do it, somebody else will. So you don't have time to sit around and do nothing. God is calling you to build it bigger. That dream that you have that you've already reduced down, it's a little puny now. God God gave you something big and you've made it puny. Uh-uh. Don't insult God like that. I'm reminded of what God did with me with this church. Even back when it was Love Alive Church and we planted. And I told y'all about the first year about how it was really, really hard. And we were in a theater that sat 300 people and we had 30 people sitting in seats. I mean, just feeling crazy. And I was getting all spiritual with uh, performing underneath what God had said about us. And I would say, it's not about the people. It's about the anointing. All the excuses that we make up and how we can churchify and bring Christianese into anything that causes us to perform underneath what God is trying to rise and raise us up into. And I remember God rebuked me and he said, you're stepping down to the outcome when I have called you to pull everything up to the vision. As a matter of fact, God let me know, don't ever insult me when I've entrusted you with my vision. You don't get to do what you de desire to do. I'm trusting you to steward the seed I've planted in you. It's my vision, not yours. Take it and do all that I designed it to do. And so that's what God is coming to do today. He came to shake you up because you are trying to reduce down what God
God is trying to pull you up to. Your idea is bigger than your performance. Your idea is bigger than your belief system in yourself. Your idea is bigger than your belief system in God. And God say, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever you have settled for, it is time to build it bigger. Now, look, I get excited. <laughs> and I want to start uh, by unpacking because I want us to take this story and I want to learn from it, right? So what can we learn from this story? The first thing, history is not always an indicator of the future. History is not always. And I know, look, I know that history and I believe that history can be used for lessons, that it can be used for perspective. And every now and then, history does give us insight on the future, but it is not always an indicator of the future. And sometimes you have gotten so stuck in history, in your past, in your failures, in what didn't work before, that you get stuck in a place instead of propelling into what God wants to do for you right now. I don't care that when you tried to do it five years ago, it didn't work. You didn't have the character to sustain it five years ago. Maybe you didn't have the plan to implement it properly five years ago. Maybe you didn't have the perseverance to implemented five years ago. But five years ago, that history of what happened then, it's time for you to cancel that out because it is not an indicator of the future. What is an indicator of your future is what God is saying prophetically now. What he is announcing right now is what he is saying about your future. My God, some of you have given way too much power to your failures and have dismissed the possibility of success or great success because the enemy has made you believe your history will repeat itself. My God, sometimes the enemy gets you stuck in what's happened for you in the past. You have seen great things happen for other people, but you struggle to believe it for yourself. Let me go back to the scripture. Luke, the fifth chapter, verses five, I mean four. In the first half of verse five, it says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Look, we got to start talking how the people talk. Can you imagine how Simon felt? After toiling all night long, do you know how long it probably took them? How much energy it took them to let down that heavy net, fight against that water, and come up with nothing? All I'm seeing is frustration. You think he just said, hey, Jesus, you know, we, we tried that last night. No, he was aggravated. I'm sure he was like, master, <laughs> we worked hard all last night. Like, you want to, huh? We worked all hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. He was instantly reminded of what had happened in history. And this happens to us a lot that our thoughts go to failures first instead of hearing what God is saying now. I guarantee you that if you listen to God now, right, what you're going to find is that your history has nothing to do with your future now. What I love about when we allow God into the process, he has the ability to completely alter the trajectory of our lives. The second thing we see is that obedience is your greatest propeller. Obedience is your greatest propeller. Let's go back to the scripture in verse five. He says, Master Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. Look what he does here. Thank God he obeyed in spite of his unbelief. When he takes us to the history, we see that he doesn't fully believe, but he still obeys. He still does what he's supposed to do, even though his belief was not all there. Obedience, listen, listen to me, is your greatest propeller. It is so vital for you to be obedient to what God is asking you to do, right? In 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, in verse 22 in the New Living Translation, it says, But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord? What is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, look what he says. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We know that scripture. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. Did you know that you could be sacrificing and not obeying? You legit could be sacrificing and still not obeying. And a sacrifice without obedience is a waste of time. 
energy, and resources. You think you're doing something because you're making sacrifices. But if you haven't obeyed God on what he wants you to do right now, who he wants you to do it with, why he wants you to do it, how he wants you to do it, if you have not obeyed God and you're just doing what you want to do, I don't care how many sacrifices you make for that idea, it ain't going nowhere. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, I say it's better than sacrifice, but when you get them both working together, my God, you've been obedient and you're willing to sacrifice. You put yourself in the greatest possible position for success. I need you to do what God said and I need you to do it right now. The third thing we learn is that it's always possible when God is in it. It's always possible when God is in it, right? With him, the Bible tells us that nothing shall be impossible or all things are possible, right? In Luke, the fifth chapter, verses five through seven, it says, Master Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, now we're doing it with God, right? And this time, Jesus is there and we have his word, right? And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Here's what happened. You tried to do it before without God, and that's where you failed. You tried to get it done on your own, in your own power, in your own strength, in your own timing, in your own way, and it failed because you did it without God. Notice, they did all that toiling the night before, but never once did they say that God told them to do it. Never once did they say God instructed them to be there. Never once did you hear that this was divine intervention from the Holy Spirit. This is what they chose to do. And it did not work all the night long, all that sacrifice, all that toiling. It produced zero results until Jesus spoke prophetically into it. When God was attached to it, all of a sudden, what was hard before became a lot easier. When you do it with God, when you do it God's way, when you do it according to God's timing, when you do it according to his plan, his process, his path, all of the things begin to fall into place when God is in it. The idea wasn't wrong. The place wasn't wrong. The timing and the heart was wrong because you tried to work it without allowing him to work it through and with you. But when you do it this time, God's going to work that thing out with you. The fourth thing we see is that it can still happen for you. It can still happen for you. The previous, oh my God, when God spoke this to me, and it's so simple, but I love how God can say simple things and yet they still be profound. He said the previous failure was no match for the present favor. The previous failure is no match for the present favor favor. God is about to breathe on that idea, that strategy, that business right now. The legacy that you're about to be propelled into is because God is speaking prophetically that now I'm with you. Now you know what to do. Now you know that you need me to do it with you. Now you know that you can't get it done on your own. Now that you now you know you're a stupid fool all by yourself, but with me you are pretty superb. Now you know that I am ready to help you along the way so that you can get to the place that I've already designed for you. God has already put this thing in motion for you. He already knows it. Now it's time for you to see it bigger, do it bigger, dream it bigger, bigger, build it bigger. Your legacy is bigger than what you anticipated before we got to this series. I know that something has been churning on the inside of you because God is trying to call you up, out, and forward in this time period. My God. In Isaiah 43 and verse 19, New Living Translation, it says, For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Listen to me. God is about to turn hard places and spaces into opportunities and growth for you. He's going to turn hard places and spaces into opportunity and growth for you. The environment and everyone else's outcomes does not matter because his favor is upon you now 
to build it bigger. It's larger than what you have allowed yourself to see. So it's time for you to go back and see it again. Dream it again. Believe it again because God is about to do it now. Back to the scripture. I love that it says, I will make a pathway through the wilderness, a hard place, a dark place, a, a, a place that's not exciting to be in. I'm going to take that and I'm going to give you a pathway. I will create rivers, water, life, right? In the dry wasteland. So what might be hard for everybody else, what might be overcoming, for something that's, that's overwhelming, I'm sorry, for everybody else, and it may be overcoming everybody else. God is about to take that hardness and he's gonna create a path for you to walk straight through that hardness and begin to propel now in this time period. Trust me, mark my words for those of you who receive this prophetically and you begin to, to respond by taking action in accordance to what the Holy Spirit said in this season, it's going to work. It's going to propel you into your next. So what should we do with what God has given us? Listen to me. Number one, erase yesterday's frustrations. Erase. Yes, get rid of that. I don't even want to see it no more. Erase yesterday's frustrations. The Bible tells us in Philippians, the third chapter, verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. For some of you, it's time to block out your memory on all of the things that didn't work in the past, the reasons they didn't work. Forget about all that. God is about to do something right now in this time. Erase those frustrations because when those frustrations are magnified in you, what will happen out of trauma, you will begin to respond even to the resistance of the enemy in this season. And you will allow that to overcome you when God has already given you a prophetic word on that. You are going to overcome it. It is time for you to erase that erase it get rid of it because it can't go with you in the future the second thing is embrace today's possibilities embrace today's possibilities there are new possibilities for you in Jeremiah the 29th chapter verse 11 it says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future so embrace today's possibilities according to what God has planned for you. And the final thing, enter into this new season with boldness, clarity, and God's approval. You can have boldness and clarity and God's approval when you do it God's way. This is his timing for you. This is the time that God is about to let you soar. He's about to open up new doors for you. This is your chance. You might not get this chance again, but you have it right now. It is time for you to enter into the new season. And you know what? As you're entering into the new season, you're going to have to get rid of some of this season. My next series is going to be called Life Edits because some of you need to edit your life. And you need to be okay with editing down your life, editing the things in your life, the people in your life, the situations in your life, editing those things down because your life needs to begin to reflect where you are now and where you are going, not just where you have been. I came to inspire you prophetically today that the Holy Spirit, I know that you feel something leaping on the inside of you. God said, build it bigger. It's bigger than what you think. It's more than what you originally saw. Some of you saw it and you reduced it down. Some of you just could never see it. It's bigger than that. Build it bigger. My Lord, I'm stirred up so much. I never, never like to close out a message each and every week without giving the opportunity to those of you who are tuned in to, to allow Jesus Christ to become your Lord and Savior. I understand that what I'm speaking of, even building it bigger and doing it God's way, I know that the starting point for that is to have a relationship with Christ. And so I want to give you that invitation today. You say, Pastor Rowe, I'm watching today. I'm ready to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I'm ready to do it God's way. If that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me right now. Say, Father, I recognize I'm a sinner in need of your salvation. Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart, wash me, and cleanse me in your blood. This day, I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. And according to your word, I now know that I am saved. 
I want you to know that if you prayed that prayer with us today, we are rejoicing with you and heaven is rejoicing over you. Look, we wanna get you started on your journey the right way. We promise we're not gonna just hassle you, but we do wanna be a part of walking it out with you. And so as you have prayed that prayer with us today, we love to pray with you and get you started in the right direction as you grow your faith in God. If you prayed that prayer with us today, will you text SAVE123 to 94000? SAVE123 to 94000. We simply wanna pray with you and get you off to a great start in your walk with Christ. Or you might be watching today and you say, Pastor Ro, look, I love this church. I know that I have not physically been to the building yet, but something about this experience is letting me know that I have found my family, that I'm ready to discover my purpose, that I know God has something on the inside of me to change the world. If that's you, you say, I'm ready to become a part of this family. I want to join up with this body of believers. Will you please text Hey Fam to 94000. Hey Fam to 94000. And let me be the first to say, Welcome to the fam. We're so glad to have you. We love you and we're thankful that you have found your tribe. You have found your family. We welcome you. Look, it's always a pleasure worshiping with all of you from week to week. We don't take it for granted that you decided to spend any part of your week with us. You could have been doing anything else, but you decided to be a part of this. We pray that it blessed your life and that it allows you to begin to propel into the future of all that God has for you. We love you and we look forward to worshiping with you again on next week. Enjoy your week.